is it good to see you? You know you're the only reason I do this. <laughs> I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot, and it's Tuesday, April 2nd, which means you can trust everything I say today. <laughs> so here on On Top and Hot, what we like to do is focus in on a hot penny stock. I trade penny stocks every single day. I am a day trader. I am looking for stocks under five bucks. And you know where I find them? Anywhere, everywhere. They're on every single market. There is no shortage of penny stocks. And I'm constantly looking for stocks that have heat, that have the potential to make us money. Now you can find that heat in a lot of different places. You can find it in the news, or like I do most of the time in the charts, or it could just be market sentiment, like the cannabis sector. Market sentiment has got that heating up right now. Today, we are looking at a cannabis company from Canada. This is Cronus Group, ticker C-R-O-N. I've had a few requests to look at this company as well as a few other cannabis companies, cannabis just in general, because it is getting hot. And I do want to talk about cannabis, but I got to be honest with you. I've lost a little bit of wind from my sales. I discovered that YouTube will not pay me for any views on cannabis stocks covered. They don't cover cannabis. So not only are you getting your due diligence for free, I'm doing it for free. It's okay. We won't worry about it. So Crone is a Canadian company and they are not doing any business in America. They were, they were dealing with CBD and hemp for a while, but they got out of that last year. Now they are only working in Canada, Australia, and Germany. And from what I can see, they've got facilities in Canada and they've got facilities in Australia, but they don't have any facilities in Germany. As far as I could tell, what they have are export licenses to send their products to Germany. So Crone, she finished today at $2.65 and she's up almost a half a percent today. Now she is on the NASDAQ. You are not going to find any American cannabis companies on the NASDAQ or the New York Stock Exchange if they touch the plant because it's federally illegal. Now, if you're a foreign company and you touch the plant like Kronos, no problem. You can go on the major exchange, but American companies can't. I'm not real happy with that rule. Now, being on the major exchange does come with a lot of benefits, folks. You don't have to pay for any of your transactions. It's free to trade up on the major exchange, unlike the OTC. You can trade pre-market, after-market. A lot of activity pre-market. You can make some strong gains there. You'll never get that opportunity with the OTC. And let's face it, there's a lot more money and a lot more volume up on the major exchanges. So it is one of my favorite places to find penny stocks. So let's get some information now about Kronos. They give us a description here. It's not all that great. Kronos Group is a geographically diversified and vertically integrated cannabis company that operates two wholly licensed producers. Now, when they say vertically integrated, what that means is they take care of every aspect of their business from seed, literally, to shelf. They plant it. They harvest it. They process it. They package it. They sell it. They are responsible for every stage of their products development and sales. Now we do get another description over here in the most recent news press, which is a little better. Kronos is an innovative global cannabinoid company committed to building disruptive intellectual property by advancing cannabis research, technology, and product development. With a passion to responsibly elevate the consumer's experience, let's get you high the best way we can. Kronos is building an iconic brand portfolio. Kronos' diverse international brand portfolio includes Spinach, Peace Naturals, and Lord Jones. So let's take a closer look at those divisions. Taking a look at Spinach first, we're at their website, spinachcannabis.com. It's the party here. No CBDs here. This is all THC with a lot of innovative products and then your good old fashioned products. They got lots of different strains of flowers, different smells, different tastes, but they all rock your world. They've also got pre-rolls for you so you don't have to put any effort into getting high. They have vapes and they have edibles as well. I don't know how many products they have. I'll let you figure that out in your own time. Looking at Lord Jones. Lord Jones was just launched, I believe it was December of last year. They've got some innovative products. First one you're looking at here, for lack of a better term, call it a hash joint. This comes in a tube, it's pre-packed, and it has a ceramic tip to it, and you just smoke it right out of that. 
That's got to be really sweet. Another one of their innovative products is the Live Resin. Now, this is very much like vaping, except it's not an oil, it's a resin. What's the difference? I don't know. <laughs> I haven't tried it yet, but I'd be happy to oblige. And the last product we got here is virtually a miracle product. This is handcrafted chocolate infused with THC, not CBDs, THC. Now, why do I call it a miracle product? Well, I came into cannabis when she had just gotten started. You know, like 2016, 2017 is when it's just started. I got in in 2018. Well, all they had in 2018 were fields, maybe a greenhouse. They darn sure didn't have any products or any stores to sell them in. Heck, they didn't even have any cannabis when I was getting into it. Well, they all growed up now years later. Well, when they started growing flour and started selling joints, they wanted to create innovative products. They wanted to infuse products with CBDs and THC, but they couldn't do it with beverages and chocolate. It just wasn't possible because when you extract THC and CBD, it's an oil. Well, you know what oil and water does, that ain't gonna work. And it does the same thing with chocolate. It separates, it doesn't combine, it doesn't fuse together. So this actually, got us to create new technology, a new nanotechnology, which now allows that oil to actually be so tiny it can break down and mix with these ingredients it normally couldn't mix with. So as far as I'm concerned, THC infused chocolate is virtually a miracle product and I want to try it too. Then we've got Peace Naturals. This is their CBD company, so I thought this is a little curious and a little interesting, if not confusing to me. This is their entire site. Right there, blink, you just saw it. Did you blink? You missed it. There it is. That's their entire site, and they've only got one product here, which is what confused me. It's like, really, one product? Peppermint CBD tincture oil. Well, I wasn't sure about that, so I did do a search on Google Images just to see what products come up. I did find two other products, but I couldn't tell if they were old or new. But what I did see in the news here, which I'm gonna share with you, they are introducing flour to Peace Naturals. And as you're gonna see in the financials, they are licensed by Canada to do anything they want, sell anything they want, make anything they want. They've got all the rights to do everything. No holds barred. This is just all they've chosen to do up to this point. Now, while I was reading the financials about their CBD and hemp products, I couldn't help but read about the Ginkgo deal. Ginkgo has a technology that has been helping them to extract their CBDs and CBG. CBG helps CBDs to synergize and work in harmony together so you get the best response in your body. Well, since they're not working in the United States anymore with hemp and CBD, it seems that deal with Ginkgo is done. They just don't have anything else going on since they're not working in the United States anymore. I could be wrong about that, but that's the way I read it. So I am going to share some more information with you when we get to the financials and when we get to the news. But for now, let's go take a look at the stock. So looking at the relative volume for Crohn's, over the last 30 days, averaging it all out, she's been doing about 2.8 million shares. Today, she's up uh, maybe 40% going to 3.5 million shares. Share structure for Crone, what do we got? Well, that's not bad. I was expecting a ton of shares, I don't know why. We got 381 million shares in the outstanding. I don't know what the float is. It's never higher than the outstanding, but it could be as high, or it could be as low as the minimum, 1 million. You can't have any less than 1 million in the float on the NASDAQ, but that's a huge gap between 1 million and 381 million. And I don't know what it is. Your guess is as good as mine. Market cap for the company is impressive for a penny stock. We don't see a lot of penny stocks that have a billion dollar market cap. You will when you look at cannabis stocks. A lot of them do. Financials for Crone. All right, this is good. She has been growing over the last four years, not only growing, but coming out of debt and into profit. Back in 2020, she was at $54 million. That's not thousands. You got to add three zeros to any of the numbers on any of these charts. 2021, she did 79 million, but they were losing money big time. By 2022, they had it up to 110 million roughly. Now they're making profits. 
15 million. Now they make more money, the most we've seen on the books, 120 million, and it's only 11.9 million. That's roughly 10% is what their profit margin is. It's not real good. So I dove into the financials to see where all that money was going to. How come it's so expensive for the money? Well, it just costs a lot of money to grow it, harvest it, package it. You got to have facilities for all of that, pay people to do all of that. So last year for that $120 million revenues, it cost them $84 million just in operation expenses. Then there were more expenses on top of that. So they were lucky to get away with 10%. Quarterly. Well, they were doing roughly 30 million for a while there, pushed over that in September to 33, edged over that to 34 at the end of 2023, and goodness gracious, not even 10%. That would be 3.4 million. No, all we get is 1.9 million. They really do have to work on that profit margin. Looking at our balance sheet. Well, they got a lot of money here, $669 million in the bank. Short-term investments, $192 million. Total current assets is just under a billion dollars. Total assets altogether is over a billion, $1.1 billion. And check this out, their liabilities is a mere $40 million. You don't hear me call 40 million mere too often, which means we have some very strong stockholder equity in this company, over a billion dollars. I'm liking that. Let's take a look at the disclosures now. Wow, look at all those form fours, folks. We've got a ton of them here for March 19th. I'm gonna kick this out some more. We got a bunch on the 12th, and these can be good news, but not necessarily. A Form 4 is filed whenever an insider acquires or disposes of the company's stock. Now, they can do that in a lot of different ways. We're primarily interested when they buy them or sell them. Well, sorry to say, these are neither. These are all restricted shares being issued, restricted shares being converted, all that sort of stuff. Options being bought, but no shares being bought, no shares being sold. Now, the other two... Uh, filings you do want to take regard with, and we're going to look at the 10K. This is their most recent financial, has a lot of information. As a matter of fact, if you're going to do research on a company, first place you should be going is the financial, not Google. What's the point of reading 13 pages on Google and 10 different news presses when all that information is inside their financial? Just get used to reading it, folks. It's more than just numbers. There's a lot of paragraphs of information. <laughs> but in saying that, I tried to learn as much as I could to share with you. And I dove into this, and we're going to do that right now. There's a, over 140 pages of small print information. So, yeah, it can be taxing for sure. But to make it easy, they always put out an 8K along with the financial. And basically, the 8K is a letter. It is a news press inside a filing and it will break down all the information for you a lot easier. So what I want to do right now is jump into this 10K with you. Now, we're not going to go through all the information here. I have just bulleted some of the highlights that I think are important that we need to know. In the second quarter of 2023, Kronos exited its U.S. hemp-derived cannabinoid product operations. The exit of the U.S. operations represented a strategic shift that has had a major effect on Kronos. Peace Naturals, as I was telling you, they are licensed. They are licensed by Health Canada under the Cannabis Act to engage in the cultivation, processing, distribution, and sale of dried flour, cannabis seeds, cannabis plants, cannabis extracts, blah, 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 everything and anything. Further down, as of December of last year, the company's ownership in Pharmacan is 5.9%. So they own a little bit of this cannabis company. Now to just show you a little more, they are not working with CBDs and hemp in the U.S. They are also not working with cannabis the THC aspect. Not as long as cannabis is illegal in this country. As long as it's Schedule 1, they're not interested. Now, maybe when it gets rescheduled to Schedule 3, maybe when it gets legalized or decriminalized, as it will be, maybe then they'll come back. 
And that is the catalyst we're looking at here in America. With the election year, there's going to be a lot of talk about cannabis. We know the HHS, uh, Health and Human Services, asked the DEA to reschedule cannabis from the dangerous Schedule 1 to the safe Schedule 3. And we're waiting for that to happen. And when it does, you can expect the cannabis market to explode, primarily the U.S. companies. But I'm expecting that tidal wave to just hit all shores, regardless if they're here or not. As I was telling you, I was reading information off and on about the Ginkgo deal. It doesn't look like they're going to be working with Ginkgo anymore because they're not working in the United States. Another bullet, which is real important. As of December of last year, Altria owned 41% of the company. This is the biggest stakeholder in the company by a long shot. They came in a couple years ago. Who said that? What do you mean, who's Altria? Obviously, you're a non-smoker. Altria is probably, if not, it is one of the biggest tobacco companies in America. And they probably are in other countries as well. This company has invested heavily into Kronos, as well as Juul and Anheuser-Busch. And they are backing us up. Now, they're not the first tobacco company to back up a cannabis company, but it hasn't been working out for the other companies. This one seems to be hanging in there real well. So that really takes care of it for the uh, financials. What I want to do now is jump over to the news, but I have to go to another site to do that because sometimes the news comes up over at the OTC market. Sometimes it doesn't. And when it does, they don't have everything, not all of the news. So I'm over here at my backup for news, Insider Tracking, which is actually a Canadian site. It is primarily for Canadian stock news, but they happily bring in U.S. news as well. But we didn't have a problem either way because Kronos is a Canadian company. So they were right here waiting for me. So I've gone back to November of last year. Kronos Group enters into agreement for the sale leaseback of its Stainer, Ontario facility. This is a huge facility, their primary facility in Canada. This was the, one of their ways of cutting expenses down and saving money. They sold the property sold it for millions and took all that money and put it in the bank. Then they turned around and they made a lease deal with the same people and now they're leasing the property and using it, but they get to use all the money as well. That's smart. A lot of cannabis companies are doing that. In January, Kronos enters Australian cannabis market. I do want to tag onto this, but rather than go into here, it actually comes up in a piece of news we are going to dive into. January 25th, Kronos' spinach brand ends 2023 as the number one flower brand in Canada. That's a big deal. They may not have the population we have, but being number one in any country is a big deal. February 29th, Kronos Group reports 2023 fourth quarter and full results. We're going to dive into that right now, but before we do, I just wanted to show you here that it was March 25th that Kronos launched Lord Jones Chocolate Fusions. Mwah. So diving into the one piece of news I want to share with you, again, there's a lot of news here because it has to deal with the financials. I have bulleted things I think we should know. Just repeating it, in the second quarter of 2023, the company exited its United States hemp-derived CBD operations. So make no mistake, they are not in the United States. The next bullet I got for us. The company achieved $30 million in savings in 2023, overachieving its previously announced operating expense savings target. You got to appreciate that. Kronos continues to monitor its Israel-Hamas war and the potential impacts the conflict could have on the company's business in Israel. They have facilities in Israel. They produce cannabis there. They grow it there. They sell it there. So, they got to keep their eye on it. Right now, it has not impacted them, but you never know when it could. In 2023, Kronos grew the spinach brand to become the second highest ranked brand by the market. We just read in the news it's number one now. Talk about growing fast. Lord Jones. In November of 2023, we launched our award-winning Lord Jones brand in Canada. Peace Natural in Israel. Kronos launched three new flower offerings under Peace Naturals, that site that only had the peppermint CBD tincture. They did that in the fourth quarter of last year. They have Rockstar, Dance Hall, and Sonic Fuel. 
And the last one I've got here for us in December of last year, we commenced shipments of cannabis to our partners in Australia, Virtua Health. Kronos owns approximately 10% of this company. So you got Farnacan, you've got Virtual Health. I don't know how many companies they are invested in. As I said, their financials are really long. There's 140 pages there. And if you're looking for something specific, like say you wanted to know about splits, well, do a search. Use your search bar there and, you know, ask for split or consolidation or merger, you know, Find things you want to find. If you're just going to read it from top to bottom, you may be there for quite a while. So there is a lot of potential in Kronos. She's working in Israel, Germany, and Canada. And the big thing about Germany here is that Germany is the hub of EU. This is the primary place that cannabis is being imported to, and then Germany is exporting it to the other EU countries that have legalized cannabis one way or another. So if you've got a contract with Germany, which is now fully legal for cannabis, they have been legal medicinally, but just last week, I believe it was, they went legal recreational. So there's going to be an open market there and the rest of EU is expounding. They're growing into cannabis as well. And they have an open door into Germany, which will get them into the rest of the EU. So the company is looking strong right now. The revenues are increasing. My biggest concern is the profit margin. They need to find a way to cut that down. They need to find a way to raise their prices. Somehow make more money on the revenues that they're generating. Outside of that, I really like Kronos. And I think maybe when it becomes legal here in the USA, we're going to see Kronos come running into the USA. A lot of competition here, but they've already got a head start. They're doing quite well. All right, let's go take a look at that chart. So let's do some charting now on my free trading platform, Think or Swim. I've got Kronos Group locked and loaded, ticker C-R-O-N. We're looking at a three-year, one-week chart, so you have an overview of what's been going on. And what's been going on is she's been falling for a long time. She had a high three years ago of $9.59, and at the bottom of this downtrend, she hit a low of $1.64 in August. And dare I say, she changed her trend off of that low bubble. No, I'm not saying she's climbing, but she's not falling anymore. And that's what's key here. Off of this low, she jumped up to her 20-day SMA, and she's just been going sideways, looking like she's wasting time. She's not. She's biding time. She's creating an opportunity for help to come to her. All of the SMAs were falling with the price. Then the price broke away right here. Well, the SMAs are still falling. So she went sideways, giving them time to change their trend and catch up. And that's exactly what's happened here. Right now, our 200 haul, 50, 20, and 9-day SMA have all changed trend. They're all starting to climb, pushing that price up to the 200-day SMA, which is also now starting to level off. Now, what I want to point out to you on this chart is that 200-day haul. Chances are you don't have the 200 haul on your chart, and it is an important SMA. Just like the 200-day SMA, it takes 200 days of prices, averages them all together, but then it gives more credence to current prices, so you end up with an entirely different long-term line on your chart. And both the 200 haul and the 200-day SMA have equal authority. And penny stocks darn sure respect the 200 haul. Here's an example. Our price is going sideways, minding its own business, crosses the hall right here. Now, I've made mine purple when it's falling and blue when it starts climbing. Because the price respects this so much, I don't want to miss it. Well, when she crossed that 200, immediately she bowed down and paid homage. And she stayed on it for a long time. When the price broke away, that gave the 200 haul time to catch up, which is exactly where it's at now, looking strong. All of our oscillators on our three-year chart are climbing, looking good. Let's take a look at that one-day, one-year chart. We have had a change of trend, right? Our 200-day SMA was falling hard and furious here, leveled out, and now she is starting to climb. It was right here that changed things. She bounced off of that low bubble of $1.64 and broke through the 200 and did a breakout. She went all the way up here to $2.64. That was a full dollar run. 
but we had strong suspicion she wasn't going to stay up there because this is too steep. She gets up there. She hasn't got any solid footing. She's going to trip, stumble, and fall back up underneath. But it was a very instrumental move. By pushing the price all the way up here, rubber bands or strings that are attached to every single SMA are affected. You get the price real high, you start pulling the SMAs up. And that helps level out the 200-day SMA. Well, when she fell back up underneath it, the 200 was now starting to level off. Perfect time to try a breakout. So she got back up there and she was bouncing on it a few times, waiting for it to change direction. And right here it did. And once it changed direction, so did she. She quit falling. She bounced here off of $1.96 up to $2.77 today. And she floated on that nine day SMA all the way up. Never dipped underneath it once. Now that is a concern. All of your SMAs and your price, think of them as having rubber bands between each one. And if you stretch too far away, they got to come back sooner or later. And that's getting a bit out there. So I'd be watching for a bounce back off of that. Looks like our volume was pretty strong today. And our oscillators are looking nice. Our PPO, percentage price oscillator, which is a lot like your MACD. You read them the same, but the MACD uses the full price. The percentage price oscillator, yes, uses a percentage of the price. This red one here, we don't talk about too much until it's necessary. This is ADX. I call it trend continuation. And it's all based on this line being straight. Doesn't matter if it's up, down, or even sideways. Straight is what we're looking for. As long as the line is straight, whatever trend is on your chart is continuing. As soon as this changes direction, whatever trend was going on, changes. I like this. I watch this change direction. I know the climb has stopped. It is a great instrument. Our MACD, we got a strong climb on that. Even though she's cooling off right now, she is still pushing up. And our RSI is all the way up there at 68. Our yearly chart is looking good too. Let's take a look at our four hour, six month. By golly, by Joe, I think we've got a trend change here. I am going to poke my regression channel on the low here. This automatically sets up, so I'm just going to drag it out over here. And as you can see, we do have an uptrend. She broke out of it once, fell all the way back down to the floor, bounced up to the center here, back down to the floor where she got smashed and bashed for a while. And then she launched from the floor right out of this channel all the way up to 294 and then pull him back. Now, again, initial breakouts, I don't expect to be the one to keep going. I expect it to come back down and bounce a few times before it takes off. So that is what I would be watching for here. That's not to say she's going to do it, but she could. All of our SMAs are strong. They're all pushing up and breaking out of that channel as well. And our 200-day SMA is climbing. Oscillators, they're not so strong. Let's zoom in on that a little bit. We had some nice climb, then sideways, and now it's starting to all cool off. Our PPO is coming down. MACD has had a negative crossover, just hovering over the signal line. And our RSI has went under 55. She's at 53 right now. Take a look at our 20-day, one-hour view. All right, I'm going to get rid of this channel, get rid of that one, and I'm going to grab a new one. I'm going to poke this low bubble here and drag it out. So we've got a stronger uptrend now, right? She went sideways, rolled right off of this 200 haul, didn't she? She crossed it. Went sideways as soon as she started getting close. She turned around and she started barreling uphill. She broke out of the channel here to 294. Came back down to the center and she is dipping right now. She may come right back down to the floor here, but I don't think she'll come out of the channel. Our 200-day haul, our 200-day SMA is climbing strong. Price is going sideways. We've got a knot here with all of our SMAs. We need to watch it. What do our oscillators say? Uh, mixed. Everything is trying to fight right now, but I can see there is down pressure on our hourly chart. Let's take a look now at our five day, five minute. So we had a big rip here that went to 294, fell virtually down to the bottom of this channel to 241. 
Then we've just been hanging in the center here, splitting the difference. She's come underneath the 200 and she is falling with the 200. And right now, the 200 has changed direction, right? Right here. This jump right here has pulled the 200 up. She's come back down. She's bounced on it. 264 went under the 200, but she's at 265 on top of the 200. So this is looking good. I'm not saying it looks hot, but it doesn't look like it's going to crash. Our oscillators, they're fighting to get recovery, but they're losing the battle right now. It's a little bit cool. But we're not looking at Crone for a instant run tomorrow or next week. We're looking at Crone to be taking gains, to be growing on a regular basis. Of course, taking some dips along the way. Those will be our buying opportunities. But down the road, these cannabis companies are going to be huge. More and more of the world is legalizing cannabis for one reason or another. And sooner or later, America is going to be legal. And when they go legal, I get the feeling, I was reading that they were talking to companies here in America, and they were saying, if and and when, we'll come talking to you. So I expect when America goes legal, we'll probably see Crone in America as well. That's just my opinion. There's a lot of uh, due diligence you can do, folks, and I ask that you do it because I did not cover everything. And if you have any plans of reading that financial, pack a lunch. Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.